Hello everyone, welcome to this lesson. So now we're going to start looking at the intermolecular forces that take place with organic molecules. So I have got an entire grade 11 chapter on this because this was a very big chapter in grade 11. In grade 12, you'll obviously still be tested on it, but within the organic chemistry section, there's only a certain part that we need to know. So let me give you a quick revision exercise that will give you everything that you need to know for the grade 12 part of organic chemistry. So what we saw in grade 11 was that if you had a molecule such as this one on the left where we can see that we've got the same atom on both sides and so that molecule over there would be completely non-polar. There would be an equal sharing of electrons and so the net dipole moment would be zero. Okay, that molecule is completely balanced, so we call it nonpolar. Then obviously we've got the same one over here, so that's going to be nonpolar. So if you wanted to boil this compound, let's say for example that it's bromine, and that makes sense because there's a Br over there, there's a Br there, there's a Br and there's a Br, then you would have to break these bonds of attraction over here, or those forces of attraction. You wouldn't break these bonds. Remember, you're breaking the intermolecular forces, not the intramolecular bonds, okay? So we're not breaking those over there. And so when you have a nonpolar and a nonpolar, this bond, this force, sorry, I mustn't call it a bond. It's not a bond, it's a force. That force is called a London force, okay? I hope that rings a bell from grade 11. Then I'm going to quickly move on to this side over here where this is a molecule, this is an atom of Cl and this is H and this is H and this is Cl. So this is HCl. If you had to look on your periodic table at hydrogen and chlorine, you would see that there is a electronegativity difference. And so there will be a unequal sharing of electrons where the electrons will be more attracted towards the Cl causing the Cl side of the molecule to become more negative and the hydrogen to become more positive and the same on this side. With this one over here, that didn't happen. Because they were the same atom, there was an equal sharing of electrons. Okay, so when you have an unequal sharing like this, we call this a polar molecule. And then obviously this one will also be polar. And so when you have a polar and a polar, then the force that exists between them is known as a dipole-dipole. Of course you can have molecules which would look something like this. You remember something like methane which looks like this. So I think carbon has an electronegativity of about 2.5 whereas hydrogen is about 2.1 or 2.2. But nonetheless we can see that there is a difference between them and so the electrons would be more attracted to the carbon. But that would happen on either side and so can you see that all of those arrows would cancel each other out and so this entire molecule would still be called nonpolar. Even though the individual bonds were polar, the entire molecule as a whole due to symmetry would be nonpolar. And then the last one that's important for grade 12 is here I've got a molecule of water. So we've got H there and H there and then an oxygen and then an oxygen, a hydrogen, and a hydrogen. So water is also a polar molecule, so it's a polar and a polar, but whenever you have hydrogen bonded with nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, then we said that we could get hydrogen bonding. So hydrogen bonding is just a special case of dipole-dipole. And so guys, if you can just know these three types, you don't need to go into all the other ionic bonding, metallic bonding, not for organic chemistry at least. You obviously need to know it for your exams, but not in organic chemistry. Organic chemistry, you just need to know the following. If it's a nonpolar part, then we say London. If it's a, a polar part, then we call it dipole-dipole. And then if there is hydrogen bonding, then obviously just remember hydrogen bonding. So for example now, if I give you this molecule, and if we want to look at its boiling point, then remember, we're not going to look at this molecule as a whole because you don't break these bonds when you boil something like this. 
These are called intramolecular bonds. We are looking at intermolecular. So we need to put another one of these molecules on the page. So you need to know that these are nonpolar molecules. They don't really go into too much detail into why, but let me quickly show you something. So we could clearly see that this hydrogen is going to point towards, they're going to always point towards the carbon because carbon is more electronegative. So these two are going to cancel each other out. Then we could look at this one pointing that way, and this one pointing that way, and this one pointing that way, and this one pointing that way. So this arrow, which is from this one, would cancel out this arrow. This arrow would cancel out this arrow. Then we could go this way, and this way, and this way, and this way. And so, I mean, there's different ways of doing this, but I'm going to cancel out these two. Now have a look here. This one here on the left would point that way, and this one would point that way. So together, if you've got an arrow going like this and an arrow going like this, well, that causes a total going in the vertical direction. Now, if you look at these two, the one's going like that and the one's going like that. So if you did the net force, it would go down. And so the net force of this one would balance out the net force of these two. Okay, so they never go into this in exams, but I'm just showing you exactly how it works. So any molecule like this, which is an alkane, is always going to be nonpolar. I'm using a specific drawing app on, on the internet that helps me to draw these molecules, but in, in class, I know that your teacher is not going to do it like a zigzag, and I don't even do it like a zigzag. I usually just do the straight one, like what we did when we looked at the drawing of molecules. And so if I draw this one out, now it's very easy to see why this is nonpolar. We could say that this one cancels out here. This one cancels out there, those two, and then these two on the ends would cancel out. So the point is, is that each bond is polar, but the entire molecule is, is um, symmetrical or it's balanced. And so we'll call this nonpolar. And this other one down here will obviously also be nonpolar. And so when you have two nonpolars next to each other, the types of bonds that you're going to have, not bonds, forces that you're going to have to break are going to be called London. Now we know that London forces are the weakest forces that we have, and so the boiling point of alkanes will be very low because very little energy will be needed to overcome the force of attraction. Something that's quite interesting, if we make the chains longer, so if we start adding more carbons, then obviously we have more forces that need to be broken. And so the longer chains have a boiling point that increases. Okay, so the longer the chain, the higher the boiling point. And so guys, thank you so much for watching that. Please note, you just need to know those three basic intermolecular forces for grade 12 organic chemistry. In the next lessons, we're going to go more into detail and I'm going to show you more examples.